this is the third and hopefully final video about Laplace's equation so if you haven't seen the first two go and watch them first um, we are trying to solve Laplace's equation with some particular boundary conditions on the square and what have we done so far well we reduced the problem to solving one where the boundary conditions actually vanished at the corners by finding a, su a suitable function phi zero which was a linear combination of lambda equals zero separated solutions that was the first video. Then the second video, we took the boundary condition over here um, on the this vertical axis um, and found a solution theta two to Laplace's equation which equaled that along this axis and then vanished on all the other three axes. Then what we're left with is trying to solve the final boundary condition along the top horizontal axis and setting the function equal to zero along the other three axes or boundary terms and just like last time we've got to find this solution theta 3 as a linear combination of separated solutions where the separated solutions are the ones that form x times y where x is a function of little x and it's either a sum of sines and coses or a sum of linear plus a constant or a sinh plus a cosh and y is a function only of little y and similarly it has the same form but um, when x is sinusoidal y is hyperbolic so it's like sinh and cosh and, and vice versa okay so let us proceed this is theta 3 we're trying to find um, we have various boundary conditions first of all just like last time we observe that x at 0 equals x at 1 equals 0 this is because the functions have to vanish along this horizontal uh, this vertical, vertical axis and this vertical axis and just like last time the fact that x vanishes twice means that it has to be sinusoidal it cannot be a hyperbolic sign it can't be linear plus a constant so it means that lambda is negative and x is maybe a times sine px plus b times cos px and again just like last time the fact that um, x at 0 equals 0 means that b has to vanish if you sub substitute in x this first term vanishes and we get b times 1 equals 0 so b has to be 0 and x at 1 equals 0 means well a sine p equals 0 which means sine p equals 0 which means p is n pi where n is an integer so these are the separated solutions we need if that was quite fast I apologize but you did see a similar thing in the last video and doubtless many times before right now We've got two more boundary conditions. First of all, there's the y equals zero boundary condition. Um, so let, let me write out what the what the um, what the full solution is going to be. This is like an ansatz for our solution, so a guess as to what the solution should be. It's a, a sum of the x factor, which is sine n pi x absorbing the constant a into the constants over here which are c n times sinh n pi y plus d n times cosh n pi y okay this is our guess as to what the solution should be we need to find c n and d n and the boundary condition we're going to look at first is when y is zero this is what i was getting at before when we set y equal to zero and at this point theta three is supposed to vanish but this is also equal to sum of sine n pi x times sinh of zero this vanishes and dn times cosh of zero which is one So let me just write that slightly more legibly as dn times sine n pi x. So 
So again, this is just a Fourier series, and it's a Fourier series for the function zero. So all of these coefficients, dn, vanish. Okay, that's easy. Um, now we need to find cn, and this is trickier because the boundary condition at y equals 1 is, well, first of all, our ansatz solution is sine n pi x times cn sinh n pi times 1. And the boundary condition is e to the x minus x e minus 1 minus 1. Um, let me just check I've got that right. This thing in a circle. Um, so let's give this funny combination of things a name. Let's call it kn. So this is again a Fourier series for this function here and the coefficients are kn so if we find the kn by doing Fourier theory then we can divide by sinh n pi and we find c so um, let's do some integrals so the Fourier coefficient of this function let me give this a name let's call this f of x um, to find the Fourier coefficient of f of x we need to do an integral from minus 1 to 1 of a function which I'm going to call f tilde of x times sine n pi x dx. Remember this is the half range Fourier theory. So f tilde is the unique odd function on minus 1 to 1 which extends this function f of x. So let me just draw a picture. If f of x looks something like this, then f tilde of x is defined over here as well, and will look like um, a 180 degree rotation of this function. Maybe that's not a very good picture, but um, it's an odd function, so it's symmetric under a 180 degree rotation. So that means that this area which we're computing by this integral, this Fourier integral, is equal to this area just by symmetry. So this is actually just 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of this function e to the x minus x e minus 1 minus 1 times sine n pi x dx. Okay. So I'm just going to split up this integral into three. We've got this piece, this piece, and this piece, and do them separately. So first of all, the integral of minus sine n pi x dx, this last term from 0 to 1. Well, integrating minus sine gives us cos, and we also pick up a 1 over n pi. So we get 1 over n pi cos n pi x from 0 to 1 cos of n pi is minus 1 to the n and cos of 0 is 1 so we get this next term I want to integrate minus x sine n pi x dx do this by parts and okay let's just doodle something over here so if we do d of x cos n pi x over n pi then we're going to get 1 over n pi cos n pi x dx minus x and then differentiate the cos the n pi comes down that's where the minus com has come from differentiate it from cos sine n pi x dx. So to integrate by parts we're going to end up, th this is the thing we're actually wanting to integrate. So when we integrate by parts we just get x over n pi cos n pi x from 0 to 1 minus 1 over n pi and then the cos n pi x.
integrated as zero to one. Okay, but if we integrate cos, we get sine, and then sine of n pi vanishes and sine of zero vanishes, so this whole integral will vanish. Um, and if we substitute in one and zero into this, we get one over n pi times minus one to the n, and then zero when we stick that into x, this, this second term will vanish. So this is the answer to that second integral. The third thing we need to do is integrate e to the x uh, sine n pi x from 0 to 1. This looks trickier than it is. If we remember that sine n pi x equals e to the i n pi x minus e to the minus i n pi x over 2i. Because then substituting this expression in, we're going to end up with something which is complex, um, but it's just a pair of exponentials. So we'll get e to the x plus i n pi x, so that's x times 1 plus i n pi, minus e to the x times 1 minus i n pi, all over 2i dx from 0 to 1. And so let's take the 2i out. Um, so when we integrate, we're going to get a 1 over 1 plus i n pi times e to the well, e to the 1 times this, so e to the i n pi plus 1 and then minus e to the 0, so minus 1, and then a minus 1 over 1 minus i n pi times e to the 1 minus i n pi minus 1. Okay. Blah. Now, the trick is to spot that e to the i n pi equals minus 1 to the n. And that's actually the same as e to the minus i n pi. So both of these factors, um, e to the 1 minus i n pi minus 1, are equal to e times minus 1 to the n minus 1. So we have a common factor of this. Let me write it out front. Over 2i. And then what we're left with is a sum of fractions, complex fractions, uh, 1 over 1 plus i n pi minus 1 over 1 minus i n pi. Okay, now if we multiply out these fractions, we're going to get the same constant at the front of 2i, and then we're going to get 1 minus i n pi minus 1 minus i n pi all divided by the product of these two things, but this is complex conjugate to this, so we get 1 plus n squared pi squared, which is the norm of this denominator. So overall, we get the 1 and the minus 1 cancel, and we have e to the, sorry, e times one, minus 1 to the n, minus 1 over 2i, well the 2i will cancel these two i's here. Um, there's an overall minus sign And we get n pi over n squared pi squared plus 1. Cool. Okay, so now you add this to this and this. And what you get is, well, I suppose you have to multiply by 2 from here. And what you get is kn. So exercise, do that now. And then, to get cn, we need to divide by sinh n pi. So exercise, do that now. Then we know cn, we know dn, so we know the values to substitute in here. So working backwards, we know theta 3. 
from the last video we know theta 2 and from the first video we knew this function phi 0 and to get the solution of Laplace's equation we have to add these three up and this is what we were calling phi um, and the reason I just want to remind you because this is kind of completely key importance uh, is the reason we can add these three functions up and get a solution of Laplace's equation is that Laplace's equation is linear in other words if we if we know that this is zero and this is zero and this is zero then that implies that the Laplacian of the sum is also zero so the answer exercise go back write out the expressions for th phi zero theta two and theta three add them up and you'll get the solution to our problem.